G'day, I'm Clive and welcome. Today we're taking a look at the Snug Pack Jungle Bag. Long term review. Now I've been using it for three years. So what I'm going to do is go over all the specs, show the sleeping bag and give you my impressions of using it now for over three years. Now I've got my little notepad all the stuff on it that I need to let you know about. Now, I don't keep it in the stuff sack, but the stuff sack just let you know is no rips on it, no tears. Shove it in, let's give it a bit of a squeeze, but once it's in, pull the draw cord, it's like a power cord here, and we've got a nice little line lock on it for easy use. Yep, straps there, cinch it down, stuff sack, or compression sack. Now the sleeping bag, nine times out of ten it's rolled up inside the bivvy with my sleep mat and pillow in there and in the bottom of my pack. Now it's never in a compressed state, really tight when I'm storing it or even when I'm using it. So there's always uh, enough space in there for it to uh, remain expanded most of the time. The only time that goes away is if I have to shove extra stuff in the pack and push it down and then it doesn't compress it all the way like your compression strap would uh, pack or compression bag would normally. So that, great. So have it delivered to you. Not great for storing in any sleeping bag no matter what material it's best either to have it hanging up in a wardrobe or in a, a cotton bag or something to allow it to breathe and giving it plenty of room so it just it's loose in there this I've, like I've got uh, down here that's really the way you should be keeping it I don't know if it's my top quilt or my under quilt for the hammock but that actually compresses down smaller than that and that's how I store it. So the sleeping bag weighs in 900 grams and similar to most of my stuff, I don't weigh this and the bag until I do a review of it. I never ever think about it. So, we'll get the scales. I so know I weighed something the other day and the weight it gave was in the bag. So, because I don't keep it in the bag, I'm, I was saving something like 28 grams, if that means anything for you. So they say it weighs 900 grams here. Let's plonk it on. And out of the bag, out of the compression bag, it's showing 852 grams. So it's 48 grams lighter than it says. So let's see if the bag weighs the 48 grams. <laughs> the bag actually weighs 63 grams. So it's going to be heavier than they state in the bag, but lighter out of the bag. Right. And what we got here, we've got the measurements. Yeah, put that down there. Put that back down there out of the way. <coughs> Excuse me. And the first thing I'll show you before anything else is on the bottom, you've got two loops for hanging it up. Now, plenty big enough, they could have been half the size if that. They could have just moved two small ones and then yeah, I did a carabiner to hang it up.
Now I'll give you an idea. The countertop from that end to this end is 2.4 meters. So let's go along the measurements I've got here. Uh, down at the bottom. Right, the pack size they say compresses 15 by 18. Now you, you can get it smaller than that's in that compression pack. Length, total length from the tip here to the bottom of the actual bag itself, not the cords, is 2.2 meters. And then the width from the shoulders all the way down is 80 centimeters. And they say the maximum height for a person is 1.9 meters to fit in here comfortably. The bit I do like about this is this large square foot box on it. I don't like being compressed so much, even though I love my bivy bags. They don't, they don't make me feel restricted, the ones I've got. So the bag being the way it is, I'm easy to move around. I, I, there's no feeling I've been restricted in there. Because you like you get with these winter mummy bags are so thick and then you're compressed to keep the space inside smaller to keep it warmer. This isn't one of them. The materials, outer fabric, we'll get all this done. Outer fabric is a micro diamond, 100% polyester. A inner fabric is a Paratex antibacterial, 100% polyester. Now antibacterial, like I said, I've been using this for over three years. It hasn't been in the washing machine and it still doesn't smell. So. It still it smells like it's just been in my pack. No bad odors odors in it. So the uh, antibacterial seems to be working. The insulation is a travel loft 100% polyester. That's all the materials. Uh, let's go through it. Then uh, temperature rating. Well, it's a comfort rating of 7 degrees centigrade, which is 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, for me, uh, that's right. At 7 degrees centigrade, I wasn't cold, I wasn't over warm. I could feel, I was feeling it warm in here. Not where you get really warm and hot, but I felt warm. So that is about correct. The low rating is 2 degrees centigrade. And that is, if I remember off their website, they say is over 40 years experience and feedback. And a two degree centigrade has been for fit, healthy people. Where the way it was described was it wasn't uncomfortably cold. So that, that says that. Now I do have a setup. I showed it a few videos ago. We're going to see how much warmer it makes with a couple more. But I've made videos over the last couple of weeks doing the updated reviews after three years, long-term reviews. And it's got the uh, Snog Pack Special Forces bivy bag. And for the la last I can't remember now, but I'm um, also started using the Sea to Summit Ultralight Insulated, which is a 3.1 R value. And I have taken this down comfortably where I wasn't feeling cold, but I wasn't feeling warm, but I was just at that point. I have taken it down to the two degrees centigrade in that situation. So decent sleep mat. Very important. That's where you'll lose most of your heat from the ground if you're laying on the ground. Uh, the sleeping bag, nice, beautiful. Then with the bivy bag over the top of that in there. That's another thing about their ratings is the comfort rating and the low rating, 
their ratings were taken as if you were in an appropriate tent. So if it was in the four season the cold, you'd be in a four season tent and we're in a light base layer, whether that's your thermal uh, long johns, leggings and top or a thin uh, pajamas. So that's where these ratings come from. But like I said, I had it with the 3.1 ultralight um, insulated sleep mat with the Special Forces bivy bag. So that covered the bases. It was a decent sleeping mat. The bivy bag gave me that little bit in there where I was only a small area. It blocked all the wind. So there was nothing going to make it seriously any colder. And I took it down to the two degrees centigrade. So in that situation, a two degrees is quite accurate. Now, I, like I said, I made a video about using this setup, but with a couple of extra things to see if I can make it even warmer, which I'll be testing in a few weeks time. So keep an eye out for that video. We've done the fabrics, we've done the insulation, we've done the size, we've done the comfort, we've done the hanging tabs. Everything else, yep, yeah, everything else, we'll go over it and we'll point it out as it goes. Now, I always thought this had YKK zippers, but there's nothing on the website stating that. But the zippers that they do use on these, over time, on the bivy bag I mentioned, over time, it actually improved with ease of doing zipping it up and down and it's the same with this the zippers here like i said they're not the ykk but they've actually become a lot smoother over the three years of using it and here's your cord on your pulley for your main zip now this zipper there's only one, but the good part about it is it flips over and goes on the inside. So you use the same poly for both the inside and the outside. So I like that idea. And here's your anti-snag. And that sits level, or well, just a little bit higher actually than the actual zip itself. It just looks like a hem that's been stitched over and stitched in but I've also stitched in a little bit of cord in there by the feels of it so that helps stop the zipper getting stuck but if you look here it's the anti uh, dirt anti dust protection for the zips and that's the same on this side so one that's going to help protect your zip but it's also going to help keep the heat in your bag so you're not going to lose them little bits of heat so if you're using your bag without anything else and the wind's hitting it you're not going to get any drafts coming through there and now it's even better still is they've got a little draft flap in there here it's about what five centimeters two inches so that is <laughs> here we go let's put the zip underneath it so the zip is here and that's how far the flap goes past. So there's no drafts going to come through there. Now, the bug net is stored in its own pocket here. Now looking at the pictures, I think they originally had it where you'd unzip it, roll it up, and you'd have it tied with two toggles or two pieces of uh, cord here to hold it in place. And they've, going by that, they've changed it now. So it's got its own pocket and they've extended the zip to allow for that. So there's your bug net. Now, we've got the zipper in here. And let's zip that up. And down that bit of zip I showed you when I was doing the zipper. Do the main zip up. And that's going to stop the bugs getting in there. 
Now there's no tags to hold this up. It's just gonna be laying on your face. Or you could do similar to me. If I got one of my baseball caps, I'll wear that whilst I'm in there and actually holds it away from my face with the peak. Now another pro with the bug net using this is using it in the winter as well as when it's in the warmer weather. Now you probably won't have as many bugs in the winter, but what this will help with, and I have noticed it big time, is it holds a lot of the heat in the bag. So if you've noticed you're in your sleeping bag and you move around and you can feel the heat coming out, so then your body's got to warm that area back up in the bag. Well, when doing that with this and having the bog net zipped up, that's keeping most of the actual heat inside of here rather than just escaping straight out. So that's another thing I like about this is that bog net. Let's put the bug net away. The, the, the zipper on the bug net, it is a double zipper. You've got a pulley on the inside and the outside. But what I'd recommend you do, because they're only tiny little zipper pulls, put a bit of cord on there to make it a little bit longer so you've got something to actually grab hold of. I keep meaning to do that and I never do it when I get home. in there, tucked away, and now it's all open. The hood. Now, I like this too. It's not one that you unzip and it lays flat. It's actually stitched down here, so it's got a continuous small hood. Good part about this is when I've got my actual sleeping mat inside the bag, and with it being a square one or wide, my sleeping mat does fit in here. This actually holds my sleeping mat in place, so that's not going to be sliding out. It also means that when I use my pillow, it holds my pillow in there. So my pillow is not going to be sliding off and disappearing in the night. It's just going to be held in place for me. I do like that. You can see here the zip where the bug net comes all the way around and zips up. And that's got its own little bit of material protecting it. And that is, again, it's got the dust proofing on, so that's going to stop any dirt coming in there and it's going to protect the zip. Now also what we've got on the inside in here, they call a valuables pocket. And it's a mesh pocket, decent size, nice stitching hem all the way around, just to keep it nice and clean. Small zip, again, I'd put a little bit of cord on there. Zippered. They're big enough to hold a phone in there or batteries or some snacks, anything like that. The zipper goes all the way down to the bottom and it is, it is a two-way zipper. So if you wanted to and your feet were getting warm, you can undo the zipper here. Let's get my hand around it on it. So it'll open up and give your feet a waft. Also got another zipper here. And this has got the same zipper pulley as at the top, so you can do it from the inside or the outside. And you can unzip the whole bottom of the bag there. So you can unzip the top all the way down and undo it, unzip the bottom, and then you can just use it as a blanket. But again, the zippers are all good. Bottom one, it's a single zip on the outside only. I could do with a little pull on it just to make it a little bit easier. Just tiny little thing, nothing wrong with what it is. So now what goes in there then is, I don't know if I put it away, oh it's all down here. That's my Special Forces bivvy. 
and that goes in there with the sleep mat in there with my pillow in there I fold it over roll it all up and it ends up about this big by that and it sits in the bottom of my 40 litre um, Helicon Tex Summit backpack nice and comfortably and I can get everything else in there too so that's the jungle bag from Snug Pack three years after use and like I mentioned in this video that it's my most used sleeping bag able to use it when it's still not warm enough but it's still too warm to have a really thick sleeping bag or a thick blanket and the bugs are out it's great because you've got the bug uh, mesh built into it and that is a no seal one or very similar to a no seal tiny tiny little holes in there really comfortable it doesn't smell yet like i said with that micro stuff it on the inside lightweight yeah <laughs> what more can you say it covers or ticks all the boxes covers all the bases and the price wise it's very reasonable price i've got sleeping bags up there which cost three four times the amount as this and that's going back nine ten twelve fifteen years some of them and they cost a lot more than this one yeah i'm using this one a lot more now than any of them the weight of this one is nearly the half the weight of some of them up there so i think that's one carrying the extra weight in the bulk that's one of the reasons why i'm not using some of these anymore it, yeah it just does the same job for nearly half the weight for a lot less money yeah not much more else i can say really like this sleeping bag the jungle bag it's called by snug pack pretty damn good quality now it wasn't made in the uk it says uh, it was imported so that probably means it was made in china which i don't always uh, view that as quality but this particular one covers all the bases it, it does as it says it's pretty damn good quality so whichever factory you made this one did a good job so that's the snug pack jungle bag so i hope you've enjoyed the video and if you're not already a subscriber please go down below click on the subscribe button then click on the notification bell next to it and select all so you can be notified of all future videos and if you are already a subscriber i thank you very much and hit that like button.